Hey everyone, I have a video that many people have asked me to do for a very long time, and I always mention this in other videos, and they want me to talk about compulsive lying, why we lie, everything about it, my journey with lying, how much I struggled with this based off my fear of rejection, why it was important to lie to my partner when she would continue to ask me, are you doing better, are you doing better? Because it was so easy to go into the venting cycle, feeling like a fraud, all the myths surrounding lying, and everything else in between. Before I go any further, please subscribe, hit that like button down below, let me know what you think about this topic. I really struggled with lying for the better part of my entire life. I lied a lot more than I didn't lie. I've lied about everything. I lied about accolades in school, um, stuff I did in sports, the amount of uh, women I've been with. Uh, I lied about certain things with my family. I've even lied about stupid stuff like the amount of music festivals I've been to. I've lied about stuff that doesn't even make any sense. And I'm going to talk about something that a lot of people miss, miss about lying. Uh, I, I don't actually see this talked about a whole lot. One of the reasons I wrote down why people lie. So and if you need help with this, if you're really struggling with fears of lying, also in the back end, I will talk about the bonus section, which is the fears of being a liar, which a lot of people have. Uh, not just particularly people that lie a lot and they're trying to stop, but people that also have a fear about lying, guilt and shame, and then setting up some shame attacking exercises to go out there and lie and tell white lies uh, and everything else in between. But please email phil at ocdrecovery.com. I know that was a long intro, but there's a lot of stuff when it comes to lying. Let me just finish the rest of my coffee. Okay. Daisy just walked in the room. I tried to get her out there with a treat so she'll like stay out of the office. Yeah, that never works. Good luck. Um, Pitbulls, man. Needy dogs. I've had all sorts of dogs. Pitbulls are needy. So I have the outline right here. Like I said, I've been doing a lot more outlines recently. I think it's been putting the videos together a lot better. Uh, when I was doing my content, not to get a little bit off topic, I was thinking, you know, how are some ways I can really bring some, bring some better quality content uh, to the channel. And I, I said to myself, I'm going to kind of decrease the amount that I do because I pump out sometimes 20, 30 plus a month. I'm going to bring it to like that 15, 20 range. Just work on the quality of it and do a lot more actual outline. So I can really think about some of the key points that a lot of people are asking me because we do so much coaching. Um, okay. So these are the common myths that I see based around lying. You need to always tell the truth. Lying betrays your soul with these very rigid black and white terms such as Lying is a betrayal of the self or, you know, if you lie, you're in a hellish landscape. Um, I'll talk about where that stuff is really coming from. Your partner must know everything about you. It has to always be an open, open dialogue and honesty is best policy. So these are always stemming from what we call the conditional self-acceptance, fear of rejection of the self and fear of rejection of other people. So it's something that we see a lot. Uh, there is no inherently good or bad thing about lying. There's pros and cons to both things. A lot of people don't like hearing that. Lying absolutely can have benefits. Lying can absolutely have negatives. Um, now, uh, everyone knows I've been, I'm a massive fan of Jordan Peterson. I read his books. Uh, his new book was very, very good. The one that came out, I think, Beyond Chaos. The second one, The 12 Rules of Life. I've never read Maths of Meaning. But Jordan Peterson is obviously a very great inspiration for younger individuals, especially younger men who feel lost. Uh, almost in an existential way, they feel like they have no meaning in life. And he targets that very, very well. But he talks in that very, um, um, I don't want to use the word religious because that's not maybe not the best word, but, but it really is that religious context of betrayal of the soul and, you know, the ultimate evil, et cetera, et cetera. And one of his, you know, rules is, uh, net, what is it? Never lie, but always tell the truth and stuff like that, which is really an oxymoron. doesn't really make a lot of sense when you actually break it down to me. I'm sure Jordan Pierce would have a great debate with me about that. I would, would love, love to have a discussion with Jordan Pierce and will never happen, but that would be a really cool thing to debate him about, um, from our perspectives, what we see. So, um, the thing that you'll have to really work at is that that black and white views about lying, right? So really looking at lying for what it is, it's just an action that human do that they do. There's no such thing as a liar. They're just people who lie, just like there's no such thing as a good and bad person. Humans are not born in, they're born as blob shells of just like, you can like flick them and break their arm. They don't have belief systems. They're just, they're unprogrammed software. And then where they're born, their culture, their background, they're programmed with this um, belief system. A lot of it is subconscious until they get older. That's why it's really hard um, for people who are 9, 10 to conceptualize existentialism or really hard for them to understand stoic philosophies because of their perceptions on life and their prefrontal cortex. It's very hard to think about their thinking. Um, so that's really the myths that are, that are based around there. Very rigid black and white views. I always say be wary of the black and whites, the rigid views that hold people back. 
So the second thing I want to talk about is why we lie. And these are all the things I can come up with. Genetics. Now, this is going to be very triggering for some people to hear. There's a massive genetic component to lying. Sociopaths, psychopaths. A lot of people lie because it's probably in their genetic structure in their brain. Just like I think when, when I look at my family, the Irish side of my family, I always struggle, wonder why I struggled so much with anger. Rob and myself talk about this. There's more than likely a genetic com component to anger. It's obviously perpetuated heavily by belief systems, but there probably is a genetic component, just like OCD has a genetic component. The number one reason why we lie or the fear of lying is the fear of rejection, the rejection of the self and the rejection of other people. I'm a terrible person. Nobody should lie. It's the worst trait, it's the worst trait to ever have. What if I'm a liar and other people reject me? I can't stand being rejected. I should never lie, etc., etc. We lie to impress other people, which is conditional. We lie about accolades and bragging about money, people we sleep with, better cars, etc., to look cool. And this is the thing I was talking about in the beginning of the video. The reason why we lie a lot of the times is it's a habit. Lying is a habit that I fell into. My father lied a lot. I got that from him. Um, I just think when you're in that world of superficial world of materialism, you know, take a lot of anabolic steroids, the Jersey Shore, people are always lying and fabricating stories again. And there's nothing wrong with lying and fabricating because if lying was the worst thing ever, you wouldn't have any comedians. So comedy is all based on fabrication and lying. Not all of it, but great things about over-exaggerating, making people laugh and having that perception. There probably is some exaggerating going on, but it doesn't make them a horrible, evil person because one action cannot equal an entire human being. Reading the book, The Myth of Self-Esteem on the Reading List is very key. Uh, remember, today, guys, we're very much pumped up in society with social media. It's a very new age fad, these very black and white statements. If you go back and read stuff like this, Epictetus' Discourse, you know, which I'm reading right now, or the Ellis Principles right here, you know, you really start to realize um, uh, more than likely the best way to live your life is probably in that balanced, moderated sense. Um, also realizing you're not going to get it right all the time. You're not going to just be honest all the time because then you'll have the fears of, what well, if I lie one time, then I'm a horrible person. So the third thing I want to talk about was getting comfortable with the feeling of feeling like a fraud. This is what's something that many people are avoiding. So when it comes to ROCD, many people are like, you know, I got Daisy over here snoring. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk around. We'll just look at her real quick. She's so pathetic. It's not even funny. So we'll go for a walk so you don't have to hear her snoring. So the, the feeling like a fraud aspect of it is something that a lot of people really struggle with. Because when it comes to relationships right now, the majority of people are getting their relationship information from social media. So... Um, and when you go on social media and you type in dating, there's a lot of stuff that pops up that's very black and white and very much based around like, always have to be honest, 10 ways to know you're in the wrong relationship, 10 ways to know if you're with the right partner. And it's all just very black and white, wishy-washy stuff. There are no rules for relationships, no, no text, whether it's the Bible, the Quran, the New Old Testament, a date, the best dating book ever written. None of those are universal principles. They're just belief systems, whether they're written down in text or not. Um, that doesn't mean you can't follow, you know, if you want to um, follow your re religious principles into your marriage, just knowing it's called faith for a reason. And that's really hard. It's the rigidity of the belief. It's not the belief about, hey, I'm going to be a good man because I'm a Christian, uh, which there is no such thing as a Christian. There's just a human who's practicing Christianity. That person was not born as a Christian. As I always use the example, if we take Nick here, and we just took Nick and when he was raised in Saudi Arabia by a Saudi Arabian family, I might be practicing um I might be Muslim, right? Uh, reading from the Quran every day and praying five times a day, which is really common in their culture, et cetera, at least to my knowledge. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. So, you know, feeling like a fraud is very key. You're going to have to get comfortable with lying to your partner. I am telling you to lie. It is something that will benefit you. Um, you don't have to go out and full out be like the biggest lies on earth, but, you know, I had to lie a lot to my partner. She thought I was recovered way long, way earlier than I actually was because I knew if I didn't go down that path, I would easily be caught in like, oh my God, you know, oh yeah, I'm having a bad day. So I had to get comfortable with feeling like a fraud and feeling like a liar. That was very, very important for my recovery process. Um, and then I'm going to talk about wearing the urges to lie because that's very, very important. So the last thing I want to talk about are actual disputing sheets 
when it comes to breaking down the fear of being a liar or the fear of lying. So, but real quick, the behavioral component is wearing the urges to lie if you're struggling with lying. And on the opposite side of that, you're exposing yourself by doing subtle shame attacking exercises like lying, uh, going into a conversation and exaggerating a story, whether that could be about your accolades with work, your family dynamics, how much money you have. It could be something simple like that. You know, you can go up to someone and be like, hey, you know, I made, you know, $150,000 last year when you only made, you know, a hundred or stuff like that. Why would you do that? Why would you lie about that to target and make it show you that it's not the worst thing ever? We're not saying we agree or disagree with lying or showing that it's not inherently good or bad. And there's pros and cons to every situation. The bonus section before I go into the dip sheet is people ask me, do I need to say I'm sorry? So a lot of people struggle with people pleasing Again, comes from the fear of rejection. So if you're saying sorry a lot, get comfortable with not saying sorry. I rarely ever say sorry. I don't see a purpose to say sorry. I think sorry doesn't really mean a whole lot. It's just someone's going to do what they're going to do. And I'm not really sorry most of the times I do things anyway, nor are other people when they do them. So it's a cultural belief that like they believe they have to say sorry in order for the other people to accept them. Do I say sorry with my wife? Of course I do, because she enjoys it. But do I need to say sorry? No. Oh, look who it is. Hey, hey, buddy boy. Yeah, you go up there on that couch. So I can't get away from them. I'm doing TikToks and stuff. They're like jumping on the couch and snoring and everything. So let's use the REBT sheet to go over the fear of being a liar. Okay? We're going to cater this one towards the fear of actually being a liar. You want to go up there, buddy? Yeah, come on. Up here. Yeah, you get up there. Yeah, jump up there. Good boy. That's his little spot. Okay, so the activating event would be the fear of being a liar, and you can put this into your guilt and shame and conditional self-acceptance, et cetera, like that. So activating event, uh, the activating event is lying. Okay, the belief systems are, I must not lie. Lying is the worst thing ever. It's an ultimate betrayal using that very black and white language. There's nothing worse than lying. It's the, the worst thing you could do to your partner. People who lie are evil people, okay? And then that equals, remember, the emotional consequence, which is, Shame and guilt, heightened panic and anxiety. What if I lie? I'm a terrible person for lying. What's my partner going to think about me? What's this person going to think about me? And then you have the behavior side, which is being overly cautious about never lying, trying to solve this Rubik's Cube in your mind, um, you know, trying to walk this maze in your mind, or playing a chess game. I'm never going to lie ever, 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 which uh, obviously is not impo- not uh, feasible for most people and can become very compulsive. So when you're doing your disputing questions or when you're doing your shame attacking exercises, you're asking yourself, you know, why is lying the worst thing ever? Why is it so terrible to lie? This doesn't mean you have to agree with lying. Remember, acceptance doesn't mean agreement, but you're becoming more comfortable with the realities that you could lie and accept yourself as a fallible human being. And then behaviorally, again, shame attacking exercises that you might have to set for yourself going out there and actually lying. Uh, getting comfortable with, not, remember, the other side of the coin, which I didn't really break this one down, but like for myself, when I really struggled with lying because of the fear of rejection and wanting to be really cool, which is the opposite of what I just talked about, which is the fear of lying of being a bad person. I didn't really care about that. I just wanted to seem cool and just seem extra, you know, superior and better than people. So I had to get comfortable with not lying, but also accepting I'm probably not going to go my whole life never lying again because I'm a fallible human being, but really working on that behavioral action and separating the lying behavior with my personhood. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, Please let me know what you think about this. Please let me know if you're enjoying the outlines. I will be doing this better. I do think the content comes out a lot better. And I really enjoy talking about this stuff with you. Some of the upcoming videos I have, I'll probably do some more stuff on coasting. I just did a really good video on my sensory motor recovery four years in. You know, I've known Rob for about four years now. God, my life sucks knowing Rob. No, seriously, Rob's amazing. And Rob's done great things for all of us. Um, I'm going to talk about my addiction with adult websites. A lot of people ask about that and just the, the pros and cons of, you know, just the black and white stuff. There's a lot of black and white stuff on pornography out there. Um, don't talk about it too much on the channel because it's not what this channel is about, but I do bring it up in videos. Um, and just maybe some more stuff on religious type stuff. Taboo fears is the one I'm doing tomorrow, making an outline for and stuff like that. So if you're struggling with lying or stuff with our OCD or the fear of being a bad person, religious OCD, you know, we got a lot of people right now, but please, we will, we will fit you into the schedule no matter what we do as much as we can. We have broad hours. We work with people in every single time zone you can imagine. You know, I got calls that will be 19 and a half hours ahead to the same time zone as me. So it's all over the place. Thank you again. Please reach out, Phil at 
OCDrecovery.com, and we'll get back to you in a timely fashion. Have a good one, everyone.